In this video, I'm going to show you how to import a data set using uh, read underscore TSV from the reader package and discuss some of the kinds of issues that can crop up when you're importing data and how you fix them. So we're going to start by creating a new project. And I've lost my R window. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to create a new project, new directory, new project. And I'm just going to create it in my user folder. Actually, I'll put it in documents. I've got an NRES 800 folder, so I'll put it there. And I'm going to call this um, the my last name tire underscore data, because that's the exercise that we're working on. Okay, so our restarts, and we've got our NRES, here's our breadcrumbs showing us where we are. Now what I'm going to do is create a new folder, and I'm going to call it data. You can call it anything you like, but this is a good practice to get into. Um, it's also good practice to use consistent case. So if you always capitalize things, always capitalize them. And if you uh, prefer not to capitalize things, use lowercase, um, then that's a uh, make sure you do that all the time as well. Okay, I'm going to just move myself over here because I think it'll be less in the way. All right, so now what we need to do is, is get some data. And I'm going to pop up uh, Firefox and go to a web page. And the link is in the description for the video. And I'll try and embed it as well. This is some data published by Morgan Ernst in 2003, a data paper, and it's Mammal Life Histories. So here's the link to the file, and I'm going to right-click it and then save link as. And this is what Firefox looks like when you do that. Um, other browsers call that slightly different things. Um, they all have the capability to do that. Uh, let's see. Now I'm going to find my documents folder. Too many things. NRES 800. Tire data and put it in the data folder. You could also Google life history characteristics of placental non-volant mammals, and that would get you the same thing. All right, so let's just check. Yeah, there's our data. Okay, just for simplicity, I'm just gonna stick with a script for now. And um, so the first thing we're gonna do, as always, is gonna be to load the data. So here we go. Uh, well, actually, one before that, we need to um, load the library uh, uh, society first. And um, now we have access to a bunch of different packages, uh, which are commonly used in data manipulation. So this is just a handy shortcut to a bunch of those packages. You could also load the packages individually. And I'm going to call this object Mammal Life History. I like to keep it short if I can because um, I'm going to be using it a lot. And what I did there was just create the assignment operator. That's the thing that says take what's on the right and assign it to the name that's on the left. So, um, and that is on a PC, Alt minus, and on a Mac, Option minus will give you those two characters and the spaces around them uh, straight up. The function we're going to use is read um, underscore TSV. Uh, we're using the underscore functions because they do things a little more rigorously than the base R functions. Um, I'm going to use these functions in all of the videos I make, but um, you can, of course, use base R as well. Data is the subdirectory and a forward slash and then mammal life 
histories version 2 txt. Okay, let's see what that is. Notice that I've used a relative path here. There's no direct, there's no drive or other folders or anything like that. So this is again a reproducible science exercise. So we want to make sure that if I move this script and the associated data to someone else's computer, that they'll be able to run this line of code. And if I use an absolute path, one that tells it exactly where it is on my computer, then it's not going to run. This relative path is relative to the working directory or the home directory of the project, which is going to be this tired data directory. So let's check and see if it runs. Uh, and it does. So MLH has got 1,044 observations of 14 variables. And um, now let's want to take a look at it and make sure that we got what we uh, are asked for. So here's the order, family, genus, species, mass. Okay, there's some problems cropping up already, I can see. Um, for example, if we look at weaning mass, there's these negative values, negative 999. So those are problematic. Um, the names are problematic. If you look down here, you can see it's loaded in these names and some of them are surrounded in backticks. That's because uh, backslashes, spaces, parentheses, these are things that are not allowed in the names of R objects. You can include them by wrapping them in these backticks, but that means you have to add extra typing. And um, so uh, we, can, we can fix that. Um, deliberately. And then the last problem I see is in this refs column, getting some really large numbers, but refs is supposed to be um, a comma list, comma delimited list of which references the data for that species came from. So it shouldn't be a single number. All right, so let's try and tackle these issues one at a time. We're going to leave the name issue uh, for a second function. But what I'm going to do first is um, take care of these minus 999s. These are flags indicating missing data. Um, so this is a, there's a variety of different ways of indicating that you have missing data. Um, but in this case, in this data set, it's been done by putting in these large negative values. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an argument to read TSV and it's just gonna be called NA is the name of the argument to the function read TSB. And we're just going to tell it what are the things that are going to be treated as um, missing values. By default, that's a space. But in this case, it's been done explicitly with these large negative numbers. Oops, zero, zero. So we can run that line again. And I'm just hitting Control Enter on my keyboard or Command Enter. Uh, yeah, I think it's Control Enter two on a on a Mac. Uh, we'll run whatever line of code the cursor is on. So let's have a look at what we got now. Okay, so now R is recognizing these as missing values. That's what those NAs mean. Not available. Okay, that's good because a number in that spot we could do calculations with it. They'd be wrong, but we could do them. So we want the things that are missing to be indicated to R are knowing that they're missing values. All right, now let's deal with this refs column. So the problem is, I'm just going to uh, pause for a moment. Okay, I thought of a different way of doing it. So I'm gonna go into my data thing here and I'm gonna right click on mammal life histories. Uh, that didn't work. Oh, there we go. I just had to click it. Okay, so what we can see in our text file is the first row has got the names, and then we've got our data rows, and that's what the refs column looks like. It's the last column. It's quoted, and then there's commas separating which number, or which references are um, being used. So it's really a character column, 
But what's happening is occasionally, let's find one, there is uh, one that has a single number in it. And so R is trying to, is real is checking those first rows and occasionally coming across something like that, a one, which isn't wrapped in quotes because it's just a single number. But the problem is that then R thinks that whole column should be interpreted as numbers and it does its best to make that into a number. Um, so that's what we, we don't want it to do that. Uh, what we want to do is have it treated as a character column. And so we can force it to uh, figure out that, to treat that as a, a, a character column by using this argument call types. And um, by default, this is just null and it tries to guess what the appropriate um, values are. But we can override that using this function calls which will create a specification for, for what to do. And um, it's very handy. I like the way this works for this one because we don't have to specify the types for all of the columns. Uh, we can, and there's a couple different ways we could do that. But um, in this case, we just want to override the type, the guess, for one column. And so what we do is we, we give it the name of the column we want to override, refs, and we set that and we say we want that to be a character column. And then it's going to treat all the others in the default manner. It's only going to override this one. So let's have a look at run that code. So that again, that was that control enter. And if we look at our mammal life histories now, we can see that it's treated it. If I hover, it tells me it's treated as a character. And then you get these um, strings of numbers which re refer to the different references that we have there. Okay, so that's dealt with two of the uh, problems. What about the names problem? Um, we can find the names of an, any object really, but a data frame in particular by using the names function and we can that returns characters. So what we want to do is replace these um, parentheses really and the spaces and things uh, to get ourselves back into a um, something that is syntactic in R. And uh, names is a cool function because not only does it return the names but we can also use it to change the names of what's going on. And so we'll use the assignment operator. We put the function names over on the left and we're going to assign to that a, a modified um, uh, vector of characters. And there's some vector helpers in the package vectors, which we don't have loaded. So we're going to use this notation vectors colon colon that lets us sort of load just the function we want just for now. And um, what we want is um, vec names and we're going to do names mlh. No, this is not right. Hang on a second. I need to pause again. Sorry, that what took way too long to figure out. Um, the function we want is actually called vec as names. Um, and what it's going to do for us is repair those names. And we're going to tell it repair equals universal. We have a bunch of different options there, um, which you can find out if you do question mark vectors vec as names. Um, and that's going to tool up. So the options are minimal. Um, unique, making sure they're unique, and universal, which forces them to be um, appropriate as syntactic names. And so that's what we're that's what we're doing right now. So we do that. We get this message down here that tells us sort of what it's done. 
So for example, mass, and then in parentheses, g, has been replaced by mass dot g dot. And that's a syntactic name. I can type it in R, so I can do mlh dollar sign mass dot g, and it'll pull up that vector for me. Okay, so now we're kind of ready to go. We've got our uh, data set. We've got names that we can use easily without having to use backticks. We fixed the references and we fixed the uh, missing values. So let's um, go ahead and end this video here. And in the next video, we'll discuss using um, this data set, uh, the, uh, fil using some of the dplyr verbs, as they're called, for um, manipulating this data.